Hello everyone. Today we have with us Nikhil Guru. His team Can and Crew recently won the prestigious Smart India Hackathon under his leadership, organized by the Ministry of Education's Innovation Cell and hosted by IIT Kharagpur. So, welcome Nikhil. Could you start by telling us a bit about yourself? Sure. Thank you so much for having me today, Priya. So, uh, my name is Nikhil Guru. I'm currently in the degree level of the BS degree program uh, in Data Science and Applications. And apart from that, I'm also pursuing a Bachelor's of Technology from uh, Keshe Memorial Institute of Tech here in Hyderabad. Um, so I'm currently interning as an AI engineer in uh, TechAllusion Private Limited, and I'm also a research intern at the University of South Carolina under uh, Professor Amitabha Das. So it's been a great year for me, I would have to say. So um, I, I'm really into tech. I really enjoy it. Uh, a huge fan of generation uh, generative AI. So uh, I've been really getting into LLMs and a lot of the cool stuff that are being created every single day. So um, I do go on hackathons. I do like participating in them quite a bit. And SIH was just one of those things that kind of clicked, you know, yeah. Uh, could you explain the problem you aim to solve and how your team approached building the solutions? Sure, of course. So uh, Smart India Hackathon is usually a very, it's a very big event, basically. It's organized by the Ministry of Education, right? So. We have organizations from all across India. We have uh, ministries, we have uh, organizations, we have companies that promote their own problem statements. So this is a real life problem that uh, we solve for the NTRO organization, which is the National Techn uh, Technological and Research Organization. So uh, NTRO was facing a very unique uh, problem where uh, they had a lot of systems that they needed to upgrade regularly, right? And as the government uh, usually maintain Windows as an operating system, uh, in the administrative side, right? So they needed a system that allowed allowed them to, uh, you know, securely, uh, you know, deploy safety protocols onto their, their Windows operating systems. So every single year, whenever a new version of Windows gets released, there's an organization called CIS that releases a bunch of guidelines that teaches you how to secure your system properly. Now, getting these guidelines is a very big process because each and every single document of CIS is around 1,000 to 2,000 pages big. So integrating those guidelines into your system is a very time-taking process, and it needs a lot of expertise. So the problem statement that we actually solved for NTRO was to find a way to automate this entire process that usually takes days or weeks in only a matter of seconds. So that was kind of what we solved for. Really amazing. So could you describe the eva evaluation process uh, during the final round and how the senior staff from NTRO, including the director and associated deputy, responded to your solution. Absolutely. So um, SH is usually a 36-hour hackathon, right? The first round is usually us presenting our idea to the management. And if they uh, green light the idea and they really like it, then they'll send us over an invite to come and display our idea uh, on stage at whatever venue that they have selected. So this year, IIT Kharagpur hosted us uh, on their campus and we went there for 36 hours. And the evaluation process took place over five different rounds. So we have two mentorship rounds and we have three evaluation rounds. So uh, the first round was basically just to meet and greet us to understand our mindset and if we had a prototype ready. So NTRO usually expects that we come in with a prototype or a basic idea of our application. And the first two rounds was just understanding if we had understood the problem statement properly. And if our prototype was able to securely, uh, you know, deploy whatever uh, safety guidelines that they had wanted us to deploy. So the first two rounds went that way. And in between, we were given very critical feedback about our prototype and how to move forward. And the remaining three rounds, I worked with my team to make sure we, uh, you know, worked on that feedback and made sure they were satisfied with the project. I still remember, uh, you know, the associate director uh, actually came up to us and he was very pleased with the product that we had displayed because in the beginning, we had taken a completely different direction. And he was very pleased with the way our ability to pivot from one idea to the other very quickly. And he said the speed and the accuracy in which we performed was something that he really appreciated. So, yeah, we got a lot. So how did the response feel? Were you like totally expecting the response or, you know, were you kind of surprised with the response? Well, the first two rounds, I would say I was not expecting it because uh, they openly told us that, okay, what you guys have made works, but it's not what we're expecting. So we were a bit, uh, you know, taken aback by that feedback in the first two rounds. And we worked a lot, right? From the third round onwards, we could visibly see an improvement in the feedback that we were getting. They were, okay, um, the, our idea was closely coalescing with what they had in mind as well. During the final round, we were expected to get like a bit of a standoffish kind of feedback, like, 
okay, right, you maybe did it. I That was the feedback we were expecting, but it was incredibly overwhelmingly positive, right? They were incredibly happy and I was not expecting that at all. I was walking in to the final round with zero expectations, but we were very pleased with how they had, uh, you know, accepted our idea and the way they praised us as well. So it was very, very pleasing. So, uh, you know, we have heard people say that nothing great comes without a challenge. So during the whole, during the whole hackathon, what were some challenges you faced as a team? I, the second we got on the flight, it was just problems, Shreya. I'll be completely honest with you because the flight that we took to reach Kolkata got delayed by three hours. And then our cab didn't show up, right? We had to hitchhike and get another cab. And we had to drive all the way to Karakpur, which is a three and a half hour drive. So middle of the night, it's almost two degrees and we don't have a lot of luggage with us. We're freezing. And we're in the middle of a cab driving three and a half hours at like 2 a.m. in the morning. All of us are sleep deprived. We have no idea where we're going. And we reach IIT Kharagpur at around 6.30 in the morning and the hackathon starts at 7. So we had 30 minutes to get ready. We had zero sleep and we walked into the hackathon just completely, uh, you know, uh, dazed, I would have to say. And then after that, we started uh, with the feedback, right? Uh, the first round of feedback was over and the judges said, okay, you guys created a pretty good solution, but this is not the solution we're looking for. So immediately, like we had one month of work, right? One month of work that we had planned had completely gone down the drain and we had to get back to the drawing board and we had to completely reconstruct everything. And I think at around hour 12, right? We had gone 12 hours, we were going strong. A third evaluation round was about to happen. And the virtual machine that we had hosted on our uh, university campus completely crashed. So uh, whatever we had built till that point was unavailable to us. We lost all our progress and we were at the brink of giving up pretty much, right? So we thought we have no sleep. We don't have a product. Our idea is about to fail. We might as well throw the towel when we have the chance. But I, I have, I'm very proud to say I have a very, very stubborn team, Priya. They said, if we've come this far, we've driven literally... 400, 500 kilometers away from home. I don't want to give up at this stage. And they were very stubborn. They said, it's fine. We'll get another system. We'll start building from scratch. And we did. And the fact that in those 24 hours, we took a completely broken idea. And without sleep, we didn't sleep for 72 hours for the entire hackathon period. And we rebuilt everything from scratch. And we won the competition in the end. I would say it was a wonderful experience. I was not expecting after so many hurdles, we would actually, uh, you know, win. So uh, this is actually a, a inside joke that we uh, have in my team. So if you've seen the Spider-Man movie, there is a phrase that the uh, characters use. It's called a canon event. So uh, a canon event is basically an event that is meant to happen. If that happens, that means you're going in the right direction. So that's why we actually called our uh, team name Canon Crew, because every single time we're at a hackathon, some sort of canon event happens and everything goes wrong. So uh, we lived up to the name, I would have to say, that we set for ourselves. And it was... It was thrilling. It's not very good for your heart if you're, uh, you know, fair-hearted, but it was definitely fun, I would say. Definitely. Winning after a big challenge must have felt great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I heard that your team now has an exciting opportunity to interview with the NTRO for an internship position. How does this prospect feel and what are your expectations for this role? Well, uh, definitely it's amazing, right? Because it, NTRO actually uh, doesn't take interns very easily, right? It's a very rare occurrence that they would actually open themselves to internships. So the idea that we're getting to work with one of the most prestigious organizations in the country is very, very, uh, you know, exciting because uh, NTRO uh, takes care of surveillance and communications for almost all major central government organizations. So it's like being a secret agent, basically, and we get to work with them. So, uh, yeah, so the scope of the project was made pretty clear. They said, okay, you guys have spent so much time creating this wonderful uh, piece of technology for us, and we would want you to come over and implement it in our servers. So uh, if everything goes well, the interviews go great, and we get permission, everything gets greenlit, there are a lot of formalities, obviously, then we'd be going uh, to their offices, we'd be setting up over there. And yeah, we're expecting it to be a very fruitful three to four months if we actually get the chance to go there. Wow, oh, that's exciting. All the best for it. And you, so what are your future aspirations? Do you see yourself, uh, you know, inclined towards uh, the cybersecurity or there are other fields that you are equally passionate about? So, yeah, I mean, I absolutely love cybersecurity. It's one of those fields that stuck with me. I have a very cool professor in college called Srikansar. 
I uh, all of my interest in cybersecurity is actually because of him. So uh, he actually introduced me to uh, CTFs and the whole idea of using an operating system to hack Wi-Fi and all of that. He was a great professor, very hands-on, awesome, obviously. Uh, do I see myself building a career in cybersecurity? Probably not. It's something I'd like to do for fun on the side. So uh, capture the flag competitions or bug bounties. I would probably do them as a weekend activity. Uh, making a career in cybersecurity is very difficult, but I definitely do see myself uh, enjoying that in the side. And at the same time, I'd like to get into the idea of business development, I think. I really like building technologies. I don't, I'm not exactly the best at writing code, but I'm really good at constructing ideas behind the code. So I definitely see myself fitting into that role, maybe product management or a founder's office, something like that. Uh, that's kind of the career trajectory I have in mind. But yeah, I mean, if you have tools in your toolkit, you can do whatever you want, right? So just future-proofing myself, I would have to say. Yeah, so well, all the best for that. And I heard that you and along with Two of your teammates are a part of BS degree program as well. So how did you come to know about the BS degree and what inspired you to choose it? Well, so uh, I think my story is very similar to a lot of kids who have joined the BS degree in the early days, right? So I was from the second batch of the BS degree. Uh, so first year, second term was when I had joined the, the BS degree, per, uh, preferably. And I actually found out about the BS degree from a Facebook ad. At that time, uh, JE was just over and I was not expecting to get into any of the big institutions, right? So I was a bit disappointed, uh, but then I saw the advert for the BS degree program. Back then it was just a three year uh, course, but I was very thrilled at the idea of getting a second chance to come and join IIT Madras and study here. And ever since then, it's been an absolute roller coaster, I have to say, uh, qualifying for the exam, then joining foundation, meeting everybody. I still remember my first paradox. I I won't be able to forget it. I met all of the professors that had taught me in foundation and diploma, and it was an absolutely amazing experience, I'd have to say. Can you shed light on how this program influenced your approach to the hackathon and the development of your solution? Sure, absolutely. So I actually have to credit the BSDQ program for a lot of the things I learned during the hackathon. So one of my team members, Ritej Reddy, he's my junior in college. We actually met through the BSDQ program. I was standing outside of the exam center one day and he noticed my ID card. He was like, uh, you're also from KMIT. He was like, yeah, and that, we kind of hit it off then. So uh, the communication and networking skills that were required for this. I met a lot of people through the BS degree, by the way. So uh, the fact that I have so many people I can rely on today, uh, who I can just give a call and get advice or give advice or get uh, you know a team for a hackathon, definitely it's one of the things that the BS degree program has given me. Apart from that, there are a lot of courses in the BS degree, uh, in the diploma level at least, that prepared me for hackathons uh, and moving forward as well. Uh, definitely the BDM project and the MAD 1 and 2 projects were the most important for me. I still remember I did my BDM project with Professor uh, Ashwin Balegasar. Right? He gave me a lot of advice during the feedback phases of my BDM project. And those feed the feedback, the teachings that he gave me still stick with me till this day. Right. Uh, and the way that he showed me the process of understanding how a business requirement works. And in MAD1 and MAD2, essentially, it's like a mini hackathon, right? You're given an SRS document and you have to completely build something from scratch. So these two projects, I would have to say MAD2 project and the BDM project, definitely they taught me a lot of stuff that were important for me to apply in the hackathon phase. And also uh, skills for professional growth, SPG. It's a pretty infamous course in the degree level. A lot of people have mixed opinions about it, but I really love the instructors at that course. Sham sir, I've worked with him personally in the student placement council, and he's given me a lot of advice as well about leadership. So without these uh, critical uh, phases in my life and these critical teachings, I don't think I would have been in the place today to win, so, or win a hackathon like SIH or participate in so many prestigious events. So yeah, definitely. Uh, amazing opportunities here. I absolutely, absolutely love it. Okay, so, you know, what advice would you like to give your juniors who are currently pursuing this degree, especially for those who wants to take part for in competitive and professional opportunities like hackathons? This is something that I wish somebody told me a long time ago. Just ask questions, okay? It's, that's the basis of everything. If you are in the BS degree program today, you have access to more knowledge than 90% of the students in this country. You have access to platforms like Discourse. You have access to platforms like Gchat, where you can directly, uh, you know, message a professor and they will actually get back to you. This is something that has never happened in the history of Indian education before, where uh, your knowledge base is so accessible. 
right? Uh, most of the people who I studied with in the diploma and the degree level are now working as TAs or PODs in the degree program now. And they're helping hundreds of other students learn the same subjects that they were taught. And you have professors like Sudarshan, sir, who are super active on LinkedIn, right? You can just ping them once and they'll definitely get back to you. So the platform, the visibility that this degree gives you is immense. Uh, you have societies, you have houses, you have groups that you can participate in. You can actually communicate with like-minded peers, but you're never going to get that visibility unless you start asking questions. If you want to ask me a question about how to participate in hackathons, you have my email ID. I can give you guys my email ID. You can just ping me and you can, uh, I can talk with you guys. If you want to get into competitive programming or open source or any of these other professional uh, degree level courses, then you just have to ask these questions. So uh, this is my advice to each and every single person who is entering foundation or entering diploma. Find as many people as you can. Ask them as many people as you can. And unless they physically push you away, just keep on asking questions until you learn everything that you need to learn. Because these three or four years that you're with IIT and Madras, at least with a BS degree, you have access to more information than anybody on the planet right now. And definitely make the most of it. Ask a lot of questions is my only advice. Well, thank you so much. For, uh, for joining this interview and all the best for your journey. Thank you so much, Priya. Thank you so much for having me today. And I would want to wish uh, a best of luck to each and every single person watching this as well. And whatever your endeavors are, I hope you guys can fulfill them. And, you know, just wishing everybody the best. That's it.